What is up, everyone? Brandon First, a.k.a. First Report, representing the first Off the Bench podcast network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. Welcome in to another edition of the NFL Weekly. We are up to week seven. We are grinding through this season. And with me, as always, my friend and co-host, Raider Jim Martinez. You can find Mr. Martinez at Raider Jim. 1090. How are you doing tonight, sir? Hey, I am doing well. We got the baseball season winding down to the big grand finale. We got the Breeders' Cup just a couple weeks out at the West, the Jewel of the West Coast, Crown Jewel of the West Coast, the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. And what do we know? We're about three weeks away from the start of college basketball. So it's a great time of year to be a sports fan. It really is, uh, obviously. Padres uh, bowed out a little earlier than all of us wanted, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but as you said, Breeders' Cup right around the corner. For me, hockey has has begun. Um, and, yeah, of course, you know, we still have the NFL that's going to make sure that if we're sitting in front of a TV as a sports fan, they are going to make sure that at some point they make their imprint on us um, and, you know, we are, of course, recording on, what are we at, the 17th of October, a Thursday, um, just about an hour away from the Broncos and Saints getting kicked off. I'm not going to go through that one today just because that one will be done and dusted by the time this is out. So we are, of course, going to be looking ahead to week seven. But as always, before we do that, take, you know, a minute to tie a bow on week six, another one of these weeks where... I do feel like I am getting a little bit more of a feel for the for the um, the state of the NFL, but when you had zero feel three weeks ago, it's kind of one of those things. There's only one way to go from here. It's up. Um, but yeah, it does seem to be still cloudy, um, but there is some visibility, at least in my mind, on the betting side of things. But uh, Raider Jim, your thoughts about week six? Yeah, you know, we talk about who are the power in the power rankings, who are the best, who are the best teams we have in the NFL right now. And that's still kind of cut and dry for me as far as who are the top three teams. But you can already start looking at each division and saying, here's the guys that are out. Here's the guys that are not going to be left standing uh, at the end of December going into January. You can start with the Cowboys. You can add Jacksonville. You can add Carolina. You can add Cincinnati because I'll tell you, even though they won that game last week, the Bengals are just lackluster and they don't have any defense at all. And it's too bad for a guy like Burroughs who has a lot to bring to the table. But man, he has gone, uh, again, we've said it a couple times already in these first six weeks of the season, Kansas City is yet to peak. They've yet to play their best football and they're just going to improve Bengals the Bengals looks like they played their best ball maybe a couple of years ago because they're not going to be back to where they were uh, in 2022. Yeah, it's the, the chiefs are interesting because, you know, you look at Patrick Mahomes, numbers, you look at Kelsey's numbers. I mean, even worthy after his big first game has, has definitely come back down to earth. And obviously there've been some injury issues. But the scariest thing about this Chiefs def uh, the Chiefs team is the defense. Again, it's it's giving Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey such a safety net that they can go out and I mean Patrick Mahomes is going to make Patrick Mahomes plays, but overall if you just, you know, in a vacuum you just put a blindfold or, you know, blind numbers and you put his stats, they're going to be middle of the pack. Um, but for, you know, whatever reason, and, and a lot of it does go down to how this team operates. Big shout out to Big Red, Andy Reid. They just go out and win games that they don't play. I mean, you said they haven't even peaked. I don't even know if they've played a, I think their best game they played might have been Baltimore. Uh, maybe the Cincinnati game. Um, yeah. But I don't think they've even played an A game yet. Maybe even a B game. Uh, and and they're 5-0. and oh. Um, and obviously now coming off of a bye week, which, I mean, I don't know where we are in the Andy Reid pantheon of record coming off of a bye week, but it's in the 900s in terms of the win percentage, whatever that is. I think he did get clipped a few years ago, but he had a, a, a very long run of pretty much um, dominating uh, coming out of the bye week. That was one thing, you know, with the Chiefs, even though they were on a bye, just to kind of 
get put into context what Patrick Mahomes and, and Kelsey, you know, haven't really been doing, but still 5-0, and oh, getting the job done. I'm sure Joe Burrow would gladly trade his stats in for a 5-0 and oh start right now. Um, and I look on the other side of the, you know, the conference or on the other side of the league, I should say, across conferences in that NFC North. The Green Bay Packers are the first four and two team in NFL history to be four and two and be in last place in their division um, just because of tie breaks and stuff like that. But that just kind of goes to show what that NFC North is um, dealing with. And obviously Chicago, very, very impressive. It looked like a bit of a coming out um, in uh, London um, against the Jaguars. And I know it's the Jaguars, but look, this is still the NFL um, he was very, very impressive. I was very impressed with the, with the Bears. Um, and then obviously you still have the Vikings and Packers uh, in that one. My final, uh, and of course the Lions, don't want to forget about the Lions. Perfect segue into my final thought, you kind or final thought for week six. You talked about the teams that were dead um, and you started off with the Cowboys, which I don't know if they're dead, but I don't fear them at this exact moment. They need a lot. The biggest problem with the Cowboys is, well, one of the biggest problems that defense, they're not good um, period. And that's always been something the Cowboys have been able to kind of rely on. You know, maybe if Dak isn't playing his best here or there, that defense going to get after quarterback. They're going to make tackles. They're going to cover, especially at home. That was the thing. I think it was 16 straight regular season wins coming into this season and they've gotten boat raced in all of their home. I mean, not like, oh, that was a tough one or this. I mean, playoff Cowboys are showing up in October. Um, And I'm not fully ready to dance on their grave. uh, But my goodness, they 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 are in a lot of trouble. Um, I thought they were definitely going to bounce back against Detroit. And wow, they uh, they got bounced. That's for sure. But not into the spot they wanted. They are in a lot of trouble. Uh, but yeah, it's through six weeks. There are definitely some things that, you know, again, if you would have told me Kansas city's five and zero, I would have said, yeah, that sounds about right. Minnesota's five and zero. I don't know about that. Um, even the, da- the Dallas side of things. And even with Cincinnati, I think it's just because they've always gotten off to these slow starts. Um, maybe just my mind isn't fully ready. It's, it's, it's almost like muscle memory of like, oh yeah, this is normal. Not looking at the way i mean like again it it, the loss to new england is going to go down as and i know it's week one but that's going to be a they're going to kick themselves because i do think this team's going to get close to eight or nine wins but i their peak is a a wild card and they're going to want that game back i mean they're going to want a lot of games back for being honest but i think that patriot game's really going to um get going but this defense has to figure something out um but we shall see as we look forward, um, you know, we're getting, I don't want to say anywhere near the home stretch, but the, the cream is starting to rise. Halfway and point. The, the chaff is, yeah, the chaff is starting to drop. You're right. Uh, about that halfway point of the season, as you said, we're starting to kind of get an idea and divisionally at least where these teams are going. But perfect segue into week number seven. Of course, looking ahead. Um, all of these lines that we're going to be talking about are, um, as of, of course, we said the 17th of October, and these are from Bovada. Uh, we are going to start in the AFC West. Some interesting news coming out of Vegas uh, seems to always be, but obviously the big trade coming through for the Raiders, Devontae Adams, has been sent to the Jets. Uh, but for this game, the Raiders looking ahead to this weekend, it's going to be the Raiders at the Rams. Currently, the Rams are six and a half point favorites. 43 and a half is the over under. And as always, if anyone's talking Raider football, Raider Jim gets first dibs. Sir, the floor is yours. Yeah, you know, with Devontae Adams and sending him over to the Jets and however much Aaron Rodgers had uh, had his hands into that and people can tell me all day long that he had nothing to do with it and tell you you're a liar yes they do and you're a lousy card player if you want if you think i'm going to buy that bluff because that's not going to happen uh but Devonte adams out of the locker room is actually a very very good thing once a guy doesn't want to put on your colors and play he's nothing but a disruption he's nothing but a cancer get him out let him go to the jets he's not going to play any better he's still nursing a hamstring 
he could probably step on the field Sunday, but he's not going to be 100%. And watch, when he does go out, he's going to try to overdo it. He's going to pull that hamstring again within three weeks, and then they're just going to be up another creek. Um, I don't think that they have to worry about uh, Aaron Rodgers getting slammed anywhere because the calls he was getting on Monday Night Football were just abysmal, just ridiculous. Uh, I mean, they couldn't go within arm's length of that guy, and it seemed like they were throwing flags trying to protect him. Anyway, though, on to the Raider game. So Devontae Adams out of the locker room is good. Bad thing for the Raiders is now what are you going to do? I'm used to, you know, resting on your laurels, which was a theme of mine last year. And you don't want to rest on your laurels, but you can't help but say, gosh, remember when they had a guy named Blintnikoff? Remember when they had guys named uh, Willie Gall? When they had guys named uh, Rice and uh, Jerry Rice, they had Tim Brown. They had all these fast guys, the speedsters. Now they're saying that their big target, their number one receiving target is going to be Bowers, the tight end. Really? You're going to pick your tight end. He's not a track star. He's good. He's big. He probably is the best receiver you have. But where's that uh, Thunder and Lightning show that you used to have when it was real? You know, it was that West Coast offense thing. They've gone so far away from that, and they don't have a running game still. Now there's a little bit of concern with what's really going on with uh, Max Crosby. Is he hurt? Is his ankle that bad? The push when he pushed the coach the other day coming off the field, and then they, they tried to bypass that or, or, or downplay that with, oh, that was an appreciation push. That was a love push. That's just because he's my guy. I I'm sorry. You don't go up and do that to your coach. I don't care how big of a star you are. You don't do that. So are there issues now with Max Crosby? Is he going to be the next one to say, forget it. I can't be the only guy out there wearing silver and black that cares. I don't think it'll get to that. I'm just hoping it does it does not uh they're playing the rams this week which could be to their favor except the rams might be uh you know they had a bye week so they are going to be rested ready to go and now the raiders are getting to be that team where it's like teams want to go in and play them because they know they can best them i think the rams are going to be victorious in this one i'll take a half a point and pick the raiders Plus seven, or excuse me, the Raiders are mine. Oh, the Raiders are a touchdown. No way, LVR. Okay, so you've got the Rams. Okay, you've got LVR, LA. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. And a half. I, should have, I shouldn't have put it that it way. It was the it's, way it's I read that. I'm sorry. Way. Give me the Rams. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'm Give me the Raiders plus seven. Yeah, Raiders that's plus a, seven yeah, on sorry. the over under. No, 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 no. So Raiders plus seven in this one, they'll cover the spread. They're still going to lose by four. They might lose by six. Uh, the over-under is at 43 and a half right now. And I will go over 43 and a half on that just because I think the Rams are going to put up a few points. And who knows, the uh, the Raiders might get lucky and score two or three times, but uh, it's going to be rough, rough on the road. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't seem to be um, a very good situation in Vegas. I do think... I don't know if addition by subtraction is the correct term when it comes to Devontae Adams, but as you mentioned, I just think there's there's maybe less tension. I'm not saying, you know, it's it's unicorns and rainbows in that locker room, but I think maybe it's a little less tense. Maybe some of the younger guys can, I don't want to say let loose or anything, I don't know, but just it's almost like the disgruntled veteran is now gone he's not going to be you know boohooing every little thing that gets done um and i think for antonio pierce now he can focus on trying to get the most out of what he's been given um the max crosby i i try to give a lo little bit of leeway when it comes to you know in the game stuff um i just feel like emotions do run high but as you said you you don't do that uh, we don't see it very often, so I could sit here and say emotions run high, but at the same time, seems to maybe the emotions are running too high in this situation. And I, I really do think for Max Crosby and maybe for the Raiders, I, I don't think a IR stint would be out of the question. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but just to kind of stop the thought of week to week, will he play? Will he not? It's almost like, look, you're going to be shut down for four to six right. weeks regardless. So 
focus on getting yourself healthy. We're going to focus on weathering this storm without you. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be tough for the Raiders going forward. Uh, but in terms of this game, I don't know. I, I, I'm with you. I'm buying or buying a half a point. Give me Raiders plus seven. The other part of this as well, in besides the colors and the the, the location, this is going to be a Raiders home game. The big of uh, L.A. number one team, much to the chagrin of Rams and Charger fans, it is the Raiders, and it's the Raiders by a lot. Um, so. I expect to see a lot of, I think it's kind of fitting just because unfortunately there were a lot of terrible towels in Vegas last week. I think we're going to see a lot of silver and black at Allegiant Stadium or SoFi. No, yeah, sorry, SoFi. Um, so that's going to be something to keep in mind. I just think the Rams, and they are coming off of a bye, so maybe the 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 injury bug is, is lessening for them, but I don't know. I, I don't see it happening um, to cover seven points. That's a big spread. I know the Raiders are in a bit of trouble. Team coming off of a bye. Um, coaching mismatch, but I don't know. I, I like the Raiders plus seven. I think they're able to keep this close. Um, in terms of the over-under, I do like the under here. I just, I do worry of if this does turn into a shootout or, you know, get over, you know, plus 45 or 46, you know, to the point where you got to score 21 points to cover that. That's where I do get a little worried. So um, kind of in my mind, I see this more of a 20 to 17 type game. Um, so I'm going to stay under the 43 and a half in this one. So sticking in the AFC West, uh, it is a rematch of last year's Super Bowl. Uh, it's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs as head two Santa Clara to face the San Francisco 49ers. Um, one and a half point spread here. Pretty much a pick them in my mind. The over under is 47. Um, and I, I am not a believer in revenge games. When you talk about I lost the Super Bowl, I don't think week seven the next year can be considered a revenge game because let's be honest, stakes are not nearly as high. But Raider Jim, your thoughts Super Bowl rematch, Kansas City heads to San Francisco as underdogs. You kind of touched on it uh, at the beginning, and that is Kansas City, the unsung heroes out there and the ones that are keeping the Chiefs at 5-0. and It's that defense, and that defense is going to be strong come, or come Sunday afternoon. And I'd also like to say, as I make that statement Sunday afternoon, we had the abysmal a uh, ridiculous Monday night football game, I think it was, last week or a couple of weeks ago, and both you and I looked at each other and said, really, this is what you're putting on in prime time? You scheduled the Chiefs and the 49ers at 1 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, but you're going to give us the Chargers and the Cardinals Monday night. Really? Boy, the NFL, they're really doing their job when it comes to scheduling on the networks, aren't they? Uh, back to the game, though, Kansas City's defense is going to, keep them in this one. San Francisco, a good win on the road last week up in Seattle. They played good. They played strong and they kind of made a statement, but they're still in my mind, that was that game. They're still inconsistent. I still don't think their defense is going to be able to, uh, to keep them in the game the way Kansas City is. It's probably going to end up, when I say a defensive game, points are going to be scored, but I think it's going to be the Kansas City defense that causes the turnover, makes the pick, whatever it may be. So watch for the Chiefs. San Francisco, uh, they're still, you know, plugging along without Christian McCaffrey, and there's still no update on when he's going to be back. But they're going to uh, – the Chiefs are going to cover very well. They're going to go ahead and put just enough pressure on Purdy. They're going to have a lot of nice looks on the defensive backfield, take away some of his targets. The running game, it's going to be tough up at the line, but I think the Chiefs, again, are going to prevail. Watch for the Chiefs. Give me the Chiefs on the money line. Over under 47, I'll take a half a point, go over 46 and a half. Going to be a fun game. That could be uh, a very good game to watch until you get to Monday night football and that Baltimore-Tampa Bay game. That's going to be a barn burn. Yeah, uh, it's funny you brought up the the Chargers, and and maybe this is a good thing. Obviously, we'd love to see K uh, Kansas City, San Francisco Monday night, but that Chargers Arizona game—I don't know if a lot of people know this—you have to have an ESPN Plus 
subscription to watch that. That is only <laughs> streaming on ESPN+. Plus. So, like I said, I, I don't think there are a whole lot of people that fully know that. I've tried to let my family know who are Charger fans, hey, you're not going to ESPN2. That, that, that's not a two. That's a plus sign. That means pay money. Um, so, yeah, it, it might be best that maybe it's just a CBS or, a, yeah, I guess it would be a CBS, probably Romo and Nance in this one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I see it going the other way, though. Um, look, the way I look at this game, I, I think Kansas City, obviously, look, 5-0. and I don't think there needs to be a whole lot of urgency in this team. I mean, look, if they want if if they want to sit here and really say we want to go 17 and 0, then okay. But I think they know they're going to drop some games. I think this is one where they're coming off of a bye um and and they're not going to show a whole lot. I think in the back of their mind they still believe there's a chance that in what 5 months this is the Super Bowl again. I mean, it's not crazy. I mean, obviously the the Vikings and Eagles and other teams would have something to say about that, but wouldn't be the craziest thought if we saw a Super Bowl rematch. So I do think Kansas City maybe keeps things a little close to the vest in this one. I do think they're going to lose two or three games this season, and unfortunately the division they're in, I don't see any losses there, so you kind of have to look elsewhere. Um, and I, I like San Francisco on the money line. Um <clears throat> excuse me, but very similar to last week or the, the game we talked about last with the Raiders and the Rams. Um, if, if the, if the game's going to go the way I think it is, at least in terms of who wins or who at least covers, or in this case, who wins, I think we're going to have to stay under again. If we turn this into a 31 28 final score, it's more than likely going to be Kansas city coming out on the other end. And we might not even get to 28 points from San Francisco, as you brought up at, it's not looking likely that we are going to see Christian McCaffrey. I think there were a lot of people who were thinking this mini bye week was going to be something um, that would help that. It doesn't seem to be the case. Um, and they've said they're in no rush to return him. Obviously, you don't want to mess with something like that. When he gets back, you want to be fully ready to go. And maybe something else to keep in mind, Kansas City's coming off of a bye. Well, San Francisco's coming off of, you know, the Thursday night mini buy. So, not at the normal disadvantage rest wise that you would normally see for um, a buy team. I don't know. I, I, I just think this is a, a game San Francisco needs because they're looking around Seattle um, who, you know, they, they do have a win against and maybe there's some chink in the armor there, but I think San Francisco needs this game more. And I think they go out and get the job done. And for that to happen, I think we have to stay under the 47. Give me a 23, 20, um, you know, I think is it Jake Moody up there kicking a last second field goal um, and Brandon's happy. But moving on to the aforementioned streaming only game. And despite Raider Jim's thoughts, uh, this could be it. No, it's not going to be a good one. Let's be honest. Uh, um, we did oh, luckily and, you know, in all seriousness, um, good to see uh, Coach Harbaugh, despite the, the little heart arrhythmia scare on the sideline. Um, he was able to, to coach that game and seems to be, um, you know, it's not the first time. So hopefully he's doing what he needs to do to uh, combat the heart arrhythmia uh, situation. But this will be the second Monday night game, of course, as we talked about streaming only on ESPN Plus And you just having cable for ESPN will not get you that. I can't stress that enough because I've been caught with that before. <laughs> but anyways, Chargers. Two and a half point favorites. They are heading to the desert to face Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Um, the over under sits at 43 and a half. Raider Jim, your thoughts? Chargers road favorites as they head to the desert. Yeah, so somewhere in all of the NFL stuff going on right now, at the end of week six, there's a team that's number one in the offense there's a team that's number one in defense number one in scoring but there's only one team that's number one in inconsistency and that's the arizona cardinals they are the most inconsistent team that i've seen in a long time uh and again i thought they were going to play much better last week but they they did not so that can only mean one thing they're going to have a great game at home under the dome climate controlled against the Chargers who are themselves can be a little bit inconsistent. I think the Chargers are looked pretty good against Denver last week. 
I think they're going to look pretty good against Arizona. Probably going to be able to do some stuff against their defense. However, I think Arizona is going to put together one of those bombs away games that they are able to put together. Uh, two and a half points on the road. So go ahead and give me Arizona plus three. The only real question I have, and it could be an impact, is Marvin Harrison Jr. may be out. That takes away a big target. But if they can just fill that in, get a little bit of uh, production out of the running game, I think they're going to make a game out of it. And again, when they do score and when they're on, they put points on the board. So give me the over 43 and a half all day long. Yeah, if you've listened to this podcast long enough, you know what I'm doing here. I'm buying a half a point. I'm taking Arizona plus three, <laughs> covering myself for that field goal. It's like clockwork. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to take that all day. You kind of hit the nail on the head with the inconsistency of Arizona. And look, I, you know, sometimes I am a little tongue in cheek when I do talk about Kyler Murray and things like that. But something you have to think about, this will be the final week before the new Call of Duty comes out. Again, you can laugh, you can roll your eyes. But there are stats <laughs> that back up. I'm serious. Like, there are legitimate, like, high sample size of stats that his numbers drop drastically after Call of Duty comes out. And again, I, I'm I'm half joking and I'm half kind of like, seriously, go look them up if you haven't. I mean, the, the, the stats are out there. Um, so as inconsistent as the Cardinals have been, this might be the last week of that inconsistency because the other consistency might be, they just might be consistently bad going forward, but I do like them here. Um, I, I'm just a huge fan of home, um, home favorites, uh, especially in this, uh, situation, Monday night football. Um, I think it's going to be a great atmosphere overall. Um, I think you'll see probably maybe a few Charger fans. This is one of the, you know, few times they might be able to make a little bit of an effort um, to get out to the desert to make a little bit of noise. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see Kyler Murray getting the job done. You mentioned Marvin Harrison being um, being out. That's That's very, very tough, but they've really struggled to figure out how to unlock him when he's been on the field. So I don't know. I, I, it might not be that huge and maybe that's the reason why they are so inconsistent. Um, but yeah, you got to kind of ride the wave like, okay, what they do last week. All right. The exact opposite. That's what's going to happen this week. And until we're proven differently, that's uh, uh, keep riding that wave. So yeah, Arizona plus three. And definitely I do see some points being scored um, with the over 43. I, I mean, I know that the offense, you know, for the chargers, maybe a little anemic, but I feel like that's a little bit of a low number um, for this matchup. So we'll take advantage of that. But Moving on to the NFC East side of things, and my goodness, folks, if you ever want to see, may, may oh, I yes, interrupt? sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, you may, hi, I, yes. You're going to be okay with this next one. I am, I am. Um, because I think it's actually going to be one of the more <laughs> positive ones. I'm going to touch on some stuff going from last week that I have to. Um, but I do think, and maybe I'll maybe I'll touch on, you know what? I'm going to start with the good. That's a good way to go about this. Let's focus on this game first, and then I'll get kind of to the thought about what happened last week. But positive. Look, I think this is a game that despite all the BS of the coaching staff and the leadership capabilities – I think Saquon Barkley has the utmost respect of everybody in the NFL, but also in that locker room. And I think there are a lot of guys who are looking around, whether Saquon Barkley says this outwardly or not, there are a lot of guys that are like, we need to beat the bleep out of this team. Not for Nick, not for the fans, not for Jalen, not for AJ, but for Saquon. Because the way the Giants fans have treated Saquon since his exit um, has been disgusting. Uh, this is a guy that was lowballed by a team that called him the fran the face of the franchise. And then, you know, look, you can go watch Hard Knocks of the offseason. They literally said, oh, he won't go to Philadelphia. Like, what, he owes you some sort of loyalty that he has to take? Running backs are already discounted. Anyways, um, I'm already still getting on the negative. But 
for that reason, I do expect the Eagles, let me set this game, um, the Eagles will be heading to New Jersey to face the New Jersey Jets. Um, it, Eagles are going to be three-point favorites, over-under is 42. I do think the Eagles win this game, and I think they win it handily. Um, I, I think, like I said, the fact that they need to go out and do this for Saquon. I also plus 300 Saquon Barkley to score two touchdowns or more. Not the worst bet on the board. I think he they make a concerted effort to make him the focal point of this game, which does somewhat scare me because it is the Met Life, Met Life turf. And, you know, the usage has been maybe, um, although the last few weeks has been down, but, you know, you brought it up a few weeks ago. Um, about, you know, am I getting worried about that? They have brought the usage down a little bit, but now I get worried that they're not using him. So it's a whole thing. But I do think the Eagles get the job done. I think they cover the three. Um, but, you know, look, I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy half a point just in case. So I got the Eagles minus two and a half. Uh, but I do like the over. Again, I, I think the Eagles are going to score. In, a, in in my mind, I see the Eagles scoring 35 points in this one. And I certainly don't see the defense shutting the Giants out, especially in garbage time late. Um, now, in terms of what happened last week, obviously the Eagles did get the win over the Browns. But as I expected, they were unable to cover, even with the number dropping back down to seven and a half. We recorded, it was nine and a half. I texted you Sunday and I said, I should have put it in then because um, it had dropped down to seven and a half, um, but didn't matter. Eagles still barely go out and get the job done. Um, defense played well. Again, though, my frustration comes with the coverage. Deshaun Watson started 11, at least 11 for 11. It might've been a little more to coming out of the second half. The dink and dunk and that stuff, the bend and don't break is it's infuriating to me. I need to see a little bit of aggression from this defense. But on the offensive side, we continue to kind of see the same things, but the coaching and specifically Nick Sirianni. This is so unbelievably out of control right now. I feel like I my family is screaming at themselves in the middle of the uh, the street and it's two in the morning and all the neighbors are out and they have their phones out. I feel like I am in the middle of the most dysfunctional family and we are on national TV. It's so frustrating to see what's going on. And I do believe playing on the road will actually benefit the Eagles. There is so much tension. There was, there was so much tension in that stadium. You could feel it through this, the screen, um, and to be fair, a lot of it was because of the Phillies. If the Phillies maybe performed a little better, that's not the Eagles' fault, but Sirianni has a hand in all that. I, My official comment going forward on the Nick Sirianni thing, my official on-the-record comment will be, we would like to handle this internally. We thank you for your privacy. We need to get this back in-house. We need to bring the volume right. down and we need to take a deep breath and figure out we are three and two in a division with all due respect to the Washington commanders is a very winnable division right now. Everyone needs to just get pulled in by their ear, by mom and dad, sit down, lock them in the room, figure it out. You're not coming out until you, or you shake hands. I don't know who needs to shake hands, but someone needs to shake hands because this is getting out of control. Um, it's, it's it's just a terrible look to be screaming at your fans when the game ends and then you come into the press conference with your children as if to stop certain questions from being asked. It's week seven. I don't need to see your children in a press conference. I'm sure you're a great family man. It's week seven. That's reserved for division championship press conferences, playoff win conferences, Super Bowl conferences. Not week six. Anyways, putting my soapbox away. I'm going to take a deep breath. Raider Jim, your thoughts? Eagles heading to Jersey to face the Giants as favorites. Well, you said it, that the Eagles defense played very, very well last week. And thanks, you know, so they are prime. They have got a chance to go out along with Barkley on the offensive side. The defense has is set up to have a stunning game because let me tell you, it's still Daniel Jones under center for the Giants. 
unfortunately, he lost the guy that protects him because their tackle is out now. And the guy's an all pro. They lost their offensive tackle. They're still without Malik neighbors. And I really hate to see that that kid had the makings of even on the Giants, just a heck of a rookie season. And hopefully he's back on the field pretty soon. Uh, but this one, I think it, it's got to be 100% Eagles. I think they're going to have the best offense, the best defense, best offensive scheme, and I think they're going to be able to execute against the giant defense with no problems. And again, I think what's really, really going to make a difference is I think Philadelphia's defense is just going to execute and shut down everything the Giants might try to throw at them. So with that said, I too will take that half point. Give me the Eagles minus two and a half on the road. Um, over under, my only problem with over under here, although we went 28 15, because the, the, oh gosh, the Giants just don't score a lot. But I will go, uh, I'll go over 42 on this one. So two and a half, give me the Phillies minus two, or the Phillies, the Eagles minus two and a half, and uh, give me over 42 and a half. Yeah, it's, this is not going to be good. Um, if the Eagles somehow do lose this game, I legitimately don't know if they're going to be able to leave the airport. Um, it's it's I bad. Do a I, I follow check. a lot. Yeah, it's 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 bad. It's bad. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it's social media in Philadelphia right now on the sports side of things. You Everyone just needs a Prozac, apparently, because, wow, just... Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of long faces, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Eagles and Philly, Philly fans, we don't, we don't really tr handle uh, heartbreak too well. But moving on to the other side of the NFC East, oh, and I, I do apologize, I should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, two teams on a bye: the Chicago Bears and the Dallas Cowboys. Um, probably, at least for the Cowboys, very key timing there. Um, but moving on. There we are. All right, Carolina, they are heading to Washington. Wow. I think the biggest line of the weekend, uh, well, the biggest line we'll be talking about in depth, Buffalo, Tennessee does have a bigger line overall, but Carolina, they're going to be eight-point underdogs to face Jaden Daniels and the first place and um, Washington Commanders. Commanders are eight-point favorites. 51-and-a-half is the over-under I know it's a big spread, but I don't know how you go away from Washington here. And you know what? There's every shot that maybe Carolina sneaks in a garbage time touchdown late and they get a backdoor cover, something like that. But um, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily bet this game, for, but for the, set of, for the sake of the podcast, you got to go Washington minus eight here. Um, I don't even think about buying half a point. I just think Washington, they're a better team. I was very impressed with how they played against Baltimore. Obviously, they didn't get the job done, but I mean, that would have been crazy. I mean, that, that would have really changed some things, um, at least the way I looked at the NFC East, that they were able to get the job done against Baltimore, but I was very impressed with the way they played. Uh, Jane Daniels, he, he's made a few mistakes. I just don't think Carolina is good enough to either force those mistakes or take advantage of those mistakes if they do force them. Um, and then in terms of the over-under, um, I, look, I, I am all here for <laughs> Washington offense, but 51 and a half, what? what? Um, give me the under. That's if, if, if we're going over 51 and a half, I got to imagine Washington's putting up 38 minimum, and I don't think they're, they're, they're going to do that. I do know Washington's defense is not great, but they – I don't know. I, I'm very bewildered by the 51 and a half, but I will take that under. Uh, Raider Jim, your thoughts, Carolina at the Commanders. Yeah, you know what? I'm still all about the Washington Commanders and their comeback year and their hot shot under center. And yeah, they lost last week. They got their feet brought down a little closer to earth. But still, as you said, they played very, very well. That by no means is going to uh, throw them off track. I think they're going to continue to execute and play well. Carolina, on the other hand, they're going to continue to be Carolina. I'm with you now. Minus eight. Normally, I wouldn't bet this at all, but for uh, for the sake of the podcast, I'm with you. I'll take Washington to cover the spread. The over/under. This is the interesting thing. Dalton can throw it, and and 
probably execute and get some points against that Washington defense. More importantly, the Carolina defense is giving up just over 33 points a game. So if that's on the average, I see where Washington's good for 38 points. And in that case, all we need is two touchdowns from uh, – from the old Carolina Panthers, and, and we're all good to go then. Everybody can go home. All the bets are covered. So go ahead and give me Washington. They cover the spread, and I'm going to go ahead and go with the over-under because I think Washington's just going to have a field day out there. The weather in none of the games that we're covering, weather is not a factor in anything. So that would be just a nice, cool, crisp fall day up there. Yeah, we're uh, still probably a few weeks away Um for really getting into it. And that's a nice little also segue because I know the Houston Texans, when the schedule came out and they knew they were going to at some point have to go to Lambeau field. I'm sure when they saw it happened mid October, they went, Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Football gods. Because about a month from now, um, green Bay, uh, if we're going to be talking about green Bay at home, yes, weather is going to be a factor, but as you mentioned, not this week, but th this is another one of these games I actually am more excited for this one than the Kansas City San Francisco, um, just because I think there's a lot more at stake for both of these teams. But it is the Houston Texans. They're heading to the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, or at least soon to be frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. The Green Bay Packers, they're going to be two and a half point favorites. The over under sits at 47 and a half. Raider Jim, your thoughts? Houston heads to Green Bay. Well, I'll tell you, this is going to be, I'm with you, this is going to be a game to watch. I mean, you got C.J. Stroud on one side, you got Jordan Love on the other side, both playing very, very, very good uh, defensively. They're, I consider them an even matchup for this one. Offensively, it's an even matchup. Shows by the, what the handicappers are saying. Right now, we've got Green Bay, minus two and a half at home. They don't even get the full three points. They're starting out at two and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, I really had to think long and hard about this one. And I was initially leaning towards Houston on the money line. Then I found out Nico Collins isn't going to play, which takes away the big target for C.J. Stroud. That's worth two and a half points to me. So with that, I think what we're going to see is Green Bay is going to have a – it's going to be very controlled on both sides. Whoever makes that first mistake wins. As I always, you know, or often say, it's going to be one in the trenches. Who's going to protect their quarterback the best? I think Green Bay gets this one minus two and a half. Over under 47 and a half. I think there's going to be a little more defense than we anticipate. So uh, buy me a half point and go under 48. Yeah, uh, you did bring up the um, the loss of Nico Collins. That's huge. I'm just checking right now. I want to make sure. Yeah, Tank Dell. Um, does look like he's going to play. So that's good. I, I, I am very high on Tank Dell. And I, I think even last year we saw CJ Stroud not regress a ton, but a little bit when he did go down. Um, I think this is going to be a big game for him. Maybe keep an eye on him for some prop bets. Uh, but I do like Houston here. I, I think I'm so impressed with what Houston has built. I knew D'Amico Ryans was going to be good. And I knew I, I, I didn't have high hopes for CJ Stroud and maybe that was, I was beholden to that wonder lick test. I think he had like, you know, I, we talked about it, but it was, it was a very low score. Every, all of those quarterbacks had kind of, you know, chinks in their armor um, size or, you know, lack of experience, things like that. And his was, didn't score terribly high on the wonder lick or whatever it's called now. Um, and I don't know why that, that just kind of turned me off to him, but I was very wrong. He is, I mean, he's a top 10 quarterback, um, and I think he has the weapons around him. He now has the coaching staff. I am very high on this Houston team. I, I could make the case that they're the third best team in the AFC behind Baltimore and Kansas City. Um, and that, I don't even think that's a crazy wild take. Um, I could even hear arguments about them being better than Baltimore. Uh, but for the sake of this one, um, I, I just I like them to go out and give me the money line. I'm not going to play. I know I, I, I joked, oh, plus two and a, or minus two and a half. I don't want to mess around with a push in this one. I just want to enjoy the game. And sometimes when, when you have games that I just, I just want to sit back. I don't want to be doing that quick math. And I know it's only three points, but you know, I'm not too bright with the math up here. So 
Uh, I just want to sit back, enjoy the game. Who has more at the end? Do I cash my bet or not? Give me Houston on the money line. I like that. I like what CJ is going to be able to do. And I think they have enough weapons with Tank Dell and company to get the job done. Um, and again, I, I think we're going to have to get over that 47 and a half for Houston to win this one. If it's more of a gritty kind of grinded out football game, I think that more leans towards Green Bay. Um, but I mentioned it kind of at the beginning when I set this game up. This is a fantastic opportunity for Houston to be able to go to Green Bay and weather not really be a factor. Uh, I mean, they're a dome team. It's probably going to be a little colder than it normally is at the 72 that they play in. But again, nothing that's going to affect this game. They have to be very, they have to feel very fortunate about that. And I think that also does factor into it as well. Again, if this game was a month from now, it'd probably be five and a half. If we're being honest, I think they get their full three and a half home field plus that dome team in weather situation but we're not to the weather stage of the season just yet but staying in the nfc north talked about how good that division is uh we got a really good one um this one might actually with all due respect to houston green bay this one definitely means more because it is a division game but it is the detroit lions they are going to head to minnesota one and a half is the spread minnesota is favored in my mind, essentially a pick em. Um, The over-under sits at 51. Raider Jim will give you the honors. Big NFC North matchup, Detroit at Minnesota. This is going to be one for the history books for 2024, I think. It's going to be, it should be a fantastic game. Detroit, of course, coming off of the uh, massive beating that they placed upon the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry in Jerry's house, no less. Uh, but that's again, as we say often, beating the Cowboys or you know, playing the Cowboys isn't playing the Vikings, especially this year's Vikings. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I think Minnesota is going to be ready to go. Detroit offense is going to execute, but they're going to have some mix ups on their defense where they're going to make a couple mistakes or get. Not not so much exposed, but I think Minnesota is just going to be more properly prepared on the offensive side of the ball. Watch for Minnesota to execute well. It's one and a half points, which means you just make a money line pick here. I'm going to keep it real simple mm -hmm. and make it at home. I'm going to take Minnesota on the money line because I think they're going to have that home field momentum going for them. And they know they need to make a, a, a statement, if you will. It's like the more teams that they're beating, the better they look and the more uh, credible they are in the eyes of the fans and in the eyes of the NFL, you know, fan base in itself, in and of itself. Uh, so give me Minnesota. Give me the money line. Uh, and I do think we're going to see over 51. There is no way this game can be kept under 51 in a climate controlled environment. I, I, I fully agree. The one thing that I do worry about with the over under um, is Brian Flores. He is really good. He He's very good with his disguises. It, I, I think I saw something like 75% of their like pre-snap adjustments show blitz, but only like 33% of those 75 are act. And it's just one of those things that just drives offensive coordinators crazy because it's almost, it's tough to watch film on Brian Flores' defense because they're so good at disguising. Sometimes too much information is not good. Um, I know that's kind of crazy, but he he does so much disguising and he's fantastic. I think he's the quintessential fantastic defensive coordinator, not a very good head coach. Um, definitely wasn't a big fan of some of the things that Tua had said that Brian Flores said to him. Not ideal, yeah. but in terms of this game, yeah, that that's I'm not okay with that. That's uh, I'm all here for coaching, but we don't we don't need to get into people's faces and tell them how terrible they are. Let's coach them up. But anyways, um, he's obviously figured something out with this defense. And uh, with all that being said, I, I do like the over, uh, but I do like Detroit on the money line. Um, maybe it's just because of the value side of it. Obviously, you are going to get a plus uh, plus number. Won't be a huge plus number, but maybe plus 110 or you know even money at worst, uh, unless this line really starts to move. But I've been very impressed with what Detroit has done this season and conversely how they've built upon last season. I was very worried that they might take a step back, um, take one or two steps back. They have not. Uh, Dan Campbell is the real deal. I wasn't, 
I, I, I felt like he was, but you know, you still kind of have your doubts. You don't want to get sucked into the one year wonder type stuff. He is so unbelievably good. I do want to add one more thing to last week um, with Detroit and um, Dallas, just because, you know, I wouldn't be a proper Eagle fan if I didn't add one little opportunity to pile on to uh, Mr. Jerry Jones. Um, not only was that beat down um, in Jerry's world, but it also happened on Jerry's birthday. So, yeah. Wow. Happy birthday, Mr. Jones. Paid billions of dollars to build that or uh, build that stadium. And you just saw your team get walloped. Um, whew, but again, I'd still trade places with that man in a split second. I'll tell you that right now. So uh, what do I know? But yeah, in terms of Detroit, I, I think they get the job done here. Um, you mentioned that that climate control, two dome teams. Um, but it's, it's going to be such a fun game. I'm not going to bet it. Um, just because of the fact I just want to sit back and watch and just watch two really good football teams go at it. And there's a chance we see this three times this year. Um, we're obviously going to see it twice. Yeah. Very good chance we see him in the playoffs. So that's also something to keep, keep in mind, maybe a little close to the vest, um, going forward, but that, that, that's, that's a tough one because I think both teams want to play it close to the vest. So I don't know how you get a betting angle there, but moving on to, the final game we'll be covering in depth, and it is the marquee Monday night football game. This one will be um, available more traditionally, or at least on cable. I don't know, and that's probably not traditional anymore. But anyways, so we'll be on ABC. It's the Baltimore Ravens. They are going to be three and a half point favorites as they head to Tampa Bay to take on the Baltimore Ravens. I'll get this one started. I... I think Baltimore is a very, very good football team. Um, as I mentioned, I think they're probably the second best team in the AFC. And if it was, wasn't was for Isaiah Likely's foot being whatever, 12 instead of 11 and a half, maybe they beat the Chiefs. But the case is they can't sit here and say they are better than the Chiefs. But I do think Baltimore is very good. Tampa, however, <clears throat> excuse me, equally as good. I don't think they have the ceiling that Baltimore does. I like ball. Uh, I like Tampa Bay here plus three and a half. I could very, I could very easily see Justin Tucker running out there with three seconds left in a twenty um, to twenty game, and he kicks the field goal. Um, Baltimore wins 23-20. Tampa covers. We stay under. That's my kind of prognostication. We've seen a lot of unders in Monday night games. Uh, maybe not so much this past weekend, but uh, I don't know. I, I think Tampa Bay is good enough to hang with Baltimore. And I think three and a half points on the road, um, especially on Monday night, there's that extra oomph. You get those extra hours to maybe, you know, throw back a few, um, get a little louder. So I like the, I like the home dogs on Monday night. Give me Tampa plus three and a half. And we're going to stay under 49 and a half Raider Jim, your thoughts, Baltimore at Tampa. Yeah, after what Mother Nature has done to that region, for them to have a Monday yeah. night football game is going to be electric, and that's going to be that's going to be a lot of motivation for those players uh, right out of the gate. Baltimore playing fantastic ball. I mean, what do you say about them? They just, you know, Washington, the up and comers, and yeah, they're they're definitely not the caliber yet of a Baltimore team. They played well, but Baltimore went out and really took care of business against that uh, that team that's really making a name for itself how are they going to play this week i think they're going to play well do they win the game mm, i don't know i can see tampa bay pulling it out myself look what baker mayfield did last week that game was close first half and all of a sudden uh second half comes around and the final gun blows and these guys got 50 something points on the board I mean, my goodness, they were just a scoring machine. I think he threw for four touchdowns last week, if I'm not mistaken. So watch for Baker to come out there and to continue to be Baker. I'll take a half point and give me Tampa Bay plus four in this one. Now, this is a good Monday night football game, and it, uh, that's going to be a fun one to watch. Tampa Bay plus four. Now, the over-under on the 49 and a half, the thing is both these guys can score too. So it's kind of hard for me to not look at that and go, I think I'm betting on what I want to see. What I want to see is one of these great, you know, let, let's finish it at uh, 38 to 35, 73 points on the board. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, but I am going to go over on this one just because I think it's going to be a, a, a great Monday night football game. 
Uh, yeah, I, I agree. The only Baltimore is one of those teams very good offensively, but if they want to go the way they want to go, it's going to be more of a kind of a body, you know, body punches. You know, they're going to run the ball. Obviously, Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, they can break it any time. But when you have a team like Baltimore, in my mind, that I just think they want to grind it out, get seven, eight possessions in a game. Um, and, and I think yeah. that's an opportunity to maybe sneak under that 49, but I'm with you. I want this to go over. I mean, 38, 35, I am here for it all day. I'll listen to that game on the radio. You don't even show me highlights. I just give that to me. That, that sounds amazing. Uh, but that would be very, very interesting. Uh, it's going to be a great game. Honestly, there are a lot of really good games on the board. I mean, it's kind of crazy that we're talking about a Super Bowl rematch, maybe the fourth most enticing game of the weekend. Uh, I mean, honestly, like I right. said, I think um, I think Houston, Green Bay, Detroit, Minnesota, and Baltimore, Tampa Bay, those last three games we just talked about, I think they are more intriguing um, than Kansas City, San Francisco. But I think that also is a great thing for us um, as football fans because sometimes – we do look at the slate and we're like, oof, okay, well, this game better be good or else we might be in trouble. Um, not the case this weekend. We do have, of course, some of the other games just kind of gloss over and we might give some thoughts. But um, starting Sunday Night Football, it'll be the New York, New Jersey, or excuse me, the New Look, New Jersey Jets. They are going to be two and a half point favorites as they head to Pittsburgh. Apparently, Russell Wilson will be starting for Pittsburgh. Um, the over under is 38 and a half, but yeah, the jets road favorites against Pittsburgh on Sunday night football, Cincinnati minus five and a half. They are going to be favored, um, as they head to Cleveland, the over under there is going to be 41 Miami. They're going to be three point underdogs when they face the, uh, uh, Indianapolis Colts. The over under is 43. Biggest line of the weekend, Tennessee. They're heading to Buffalo. They will be facing the Bills, who are nine-point favorites. The over-under sits at 40 and a half. Heading to London, um, Jacksonville doing their, their, their second uh, straight London game. They're going to be five-point favorites when they face the New England Patriots. 42 and a half is the over-under there. And finally, Seattle. They will head to the Dirty South to face the Atlanta Falcons, who are three-point favorites, and the over-under sits at 51. Raider Jim, any thoughts on any of those games? I just want to know, what what does the NFL think when they're trying to promote this international, the game internationally, and you send New England and Jacksonville? Are they really charging those people that kind of money to watch these two teams? And are is somebody over here really going to wake up and be watching this at 5 a.m. on Sunday? I'm, I'm maybe the Jacksonville fan base, maybe the Patriot fan base, but uh, they can't be getting good numbers for a game like that. That aside, I like that Sunday night football game. That's going to be a good one. Uh, Jets, uh, if you think that it's not posted in the Pittsburgh locker room that they are at home and they're the underdogs by two and a half. Oh, no, 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 no. There's going to be the Pittsburgh defense is going to have something to say about that. They're going to bring it to, um, they're going to bring it to Mr. Rogers and company. And then uh, Devonte Adams, does he play? Doesn't he play? You said it. Uh, Russell Wilson is going to get the nod on this one. So even if that doesn't play, they got a guy who's already started for him this season. So plug and play, then put Russell back down, bring the other guy back in, Fields back in. So they've got, to me, that that is a bonus for Pittsburgh on that on the offensive side of the ball. I really think that they're going to take care of business. It's going to be a low-scoring game. It's going to be a real blue-collar thing, you know, two guys punching it out at the line. But I think Pittsburgh's going to take care of business in that one. I agree. Um, as we speak, um, I just went on Bovada. I just wanted to make sure again that I didn't like misread it. I even updated the odds earlier this morning, um, at least on our prep sheet. This line has moved all the way down to only Jets minus one. So as we speak, I am putting a money line bet on the Steelers. I have to imagine this is going to turn into, even Absolutely. if it turns into a one point, 
it, it, this is Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh's going to win this game. I'm sorry. I uh, Sunday night football at home. It's almost, I mean, this is the, maybe the Admiral Akbar game of he should be screaming at me. It's a trap. But I'm, again, I'm going to be that rat that looks at that cheese and goes, you know what? It might break my neck, but it looks really good. Um, so, yeah, I like Pittsburgh there as well. Um, you know, it's funny you brought up the, uh, you know, the international series, the, the London game seemed to, I, I, and sometimes, you know, you can look and you can be like, oh, you know, even like last year when, when Aaron Rodgers was hurt and the Jets were on prime time, like pretty much the first six weeks, you could at least be like, all right, well, you understood what they were trying to do. Um, but New England, Jacksonville, I don't know yeah. what they were trying to do other than punish the poor people of London. Um, and you brought up the, uh, you brought up the, uh, having to wake up or w wanting to wake up. Unfortunately, Travis Etienne is my fantasy running back and he is playing the questionable game time decision. So Brandon will have to be setting his alarm at six o'clock to turn my phone on Google, whether or not he's playing just accordingly. But have no fear. I'm going right back to sleep. Maybe I'll turn the game on just like on in the background and, and, and then fall asleep. Um, but yeah, that's a tough one. Um, it, it's I, I really do think that the games that we kind of win over, especially like I said, I keep harping on it. But the final three, those are the ones you really got to keep an eye on. Jacksonville, New England, if that ends up being the game of the day and, you know, the, all of the West Coast missed it. I think we'll all be okay. Um, I, I I don't see it happening, but really, really good slate. Um, and you mentioned it, great way to finish up Sunday um, in Pittsburgh. But the one thing I will say, the last time we had a Sunday night football game in Pittsburgh and we had a London game, it was just two weeks ago. And I don't think the Sunday night game ended till like one o'clock a.m. Uh, local time. Right. Um, so, so just throwing that out there, you know, and, and you, you, I know you did say weather wasn't a factor, but, and that would be, that would be pretty crazy if we have another, uh, you know, 15, 16 hour NFL Sunday, two out of three weeks, but, um, moving on Raider, Jim, your final thoughts for this episode of the NFL weekly. Yeah, real quick on a couple things, but primarily the, you know, I've never have been one to appreciate uh, bullies, not that anybody appreciates bullies, but when somebody has this, I'm better than you, and that's why I'm the bully, I really don't like it. I don't know if you have heard the clips of the Jerry Jones interview. Uh, he took mine. It was yep. yesterday or today. And I was like, my gosh, Jerry, are you kidding me? And let me, I should have prefaced it with, I actually liked Jerry Jones for several years, early 2000s, mid 2000s. Uh, I helped do a charity event and I would reach out to several organizations. The Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones were the only team that annually sent me something. And Jerry Jones always signed whatever he sent. He would have a player sign, but then he would always sign it as well. The letter would come. Uh, just wanted to offer this on behalf of the, the Dallas Cowboy organization. We hope you have a da 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 Sincerely, Jerry Jones. And he'd sign it. And I was like, well, why can't the, you know, Spanos told me that I can come down and pick up um, refrigerator decals out of the main. So that's no kidding. That That's that's what the Chargers offered me. And, so, you know, things like that. But when he, for him to pull the, the muscle thing that he pulled with these guys, and I'm going to have to find somebody else to, you know, my job isn't, you know, I don't need to come here and answer your questions. Dude, you own the team and you're the general manager. Guess what? Yeah, it yeah. is up to you. It is very much up to you to stand there and face the firing squad, if you will. So, Jerry, I, I get it. Sometimes, you know, somebody stepped on your birthday cake and it really made you mad. But let's have a little decorum, have a little professionalism. Success is not because you've got more money and you can fire people. Yeah, you know, what you'd think he's running for president with that attitude, but I'll leave that <laughs> remark at that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but Jerry, come on, you're, you're, you're a better man than that. I know you are. So uh, just play the game, play the game and get your yeah. boys to play the game. And maybe you won't be in such a bad mood. 
Amen. And also, too, I mean, I'm no lawyer or anything, but for those gentlemen who are, you know, interviewing Jerry Jones, uh, job security, because if they get fired in the next two years, um, judge, I have tape of this person threatening their job. Um, th this is how much we want. Um, yeah. Cash or check. You know, uh, again, like you and, and you don't. It's not DallasCowboys.com. That was it was whatever. I think it was a, a Fox NBC affiliate. And I'm sure Jerry Jones has some pull, but you can't outwardly say I can get you fired and then get them fired. We don't do that anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, I did hear those clips. I look, obviously, I am an Eagles fan. I have nothing but distaste for the Dallas Cowboys, but I can also separate. Um, I can separate athlete from artist or artist from person, athlete from person. And I do it a lot with Dak Prescott because I, I think Dak Prescott is very overrated on the football team. But I also think Dak Prescott is one of the best human beings we have in sports, Correct. let alone the NFL. He is, he is, he's incredible. Again, um, you know, he goes anywhere else. I'll be one of his biggest fans. Uh, but you know, I, I have to be honest. I think he is a bit overrated. Um, but with Jerry, I, I do know I've heard things like that a lot about Jerry Jones, that he is very charitable. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, he's gotten this far. There are plenty of skeletons in his closet and things like that. Uh, but yeah, it was a very, very tough look from him. And that was actually going to be my final thought. But I have, an, I have a backup final thought. And I'm actually going to rope Raider Jim into this one. Um, because at the end of my little spiel right here, um, I'm going to need Raider Jim's thoughts. But my hat goes off to arguably one of the smartest workers in American history. You might know him as soon-to-be Hall of Fame quarterback, former six-time NFL Super Bowl champion, Tom Brady. Because this man has decided, I'm going to buy an NFL football team, or at least buy a stake in an NFL <laughs> football team. And conversely, I'm going to be employed by Fox that covers the NFL. And I know all of these rules all of these things that I cannot do, no production meetings, no pre-production meetings, no one-on-one -on -one interviews with the uh, with a team, anything like that. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like you getting paid a lot of money to not have to do a lot of your job. And you know what, sir? My hat's off to you. Uh, you got Rupert Murdoch to give you a lot of money. Um, ironically, a lot of that money is going to go into the Vegas organization or at least go into his stake of it. But yeah, um, there's a whole thing and I'm not even going to pull up the note or the, the notes, but there's a whole list of things that Tom Brady cannot do that every other color commentator or play by play commentator, uh, even sideline reporter have to do for prep. Um, and if you talk to a lot of commentators, they will tell you that is the worst part of their job. Um, is the kind of BS of the pre-production meetings and stuff like that. Tom Brady, uh, he doesn't have to do it. He's not allowed. So my hat goes off to Mr. Brady. I mean, look, he's playing 40 chess. I don't have to fully like the guy, but I respect him. It's the, uh, you know, uh, I don't like you, but God, I respect you uh, situation. So, you know, and, and I will give credit where credit is due. He has gotten better um on the the play-by-play -play or and i'm sorry on the color commentary i'll give him credit there but yeah i just thought that was a nice that everyone's like oh my god he can't do it. and i'm over here like that's the dream that's incredible that's like going into work and my doctor right now he can't he can't wake up before the sun comes up and then he can't leave um before rush hour so essentially i'm working a four-hour day but getting paid for eight hours what a life so good for you mr brady but i do want to pull you into that raider gym on a scale of one to ten, how much do you think this affects the 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 Vegas Raiders? Well, as <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. I think the guy's a okay. genius. Are you kidding yeah. me? Right. Hey, Tom, we want you to go into the locker room before and after the game. Can't okay. can't go into nope. locker rooms. Nope. Allowed. Can't go to really the production want to, meetings. Boss. Nope. I nope. really want to. <laughs> this is a genius move. I got so much respect for that. Heck yeah. Just just just. Just do the automatic deposit, and I'll I'll be there to call the game. Uh, what does it do to the Raiders? 
I think it's good for the Raiders. It's positive for the Raiders, but where it has already not so much backfired, but where it is slightly detrimental already is how would you like to be the newly hired Tom Telesco? And you hear the owner of the team saying, thank God we got Tom Brady as an owner. Maybe he can come in here and find us a quarterback and help us develop a quarterback. Uh, oh, okay. If I'm the GM, I'm just like, dude, I, I, I'm, excuse me, can I get a couple minutes with you in your office behind closed doors? That's That was just disrespect. I don't have any love lost for Tom Telesco, but boy, you talk about, you're pretty much, you pretty much just said you don't have confidence in the guy to find the solution for that problem we have under center. And I, that's a bad look, bad look, but it's what I said last week about the Raiders. Just because your dad knew football and knows football, it's like me and my dad. Just because my dad can take apart a car and he could put it back together, not me. That's not my forte. So I, I think Mark Davis is mm, mm, mm. He's going to still do more harm than good if he doesn't start getting the right people to run the organization. But I'm glad to see Tom Brady as part of it. Uh, who is the somebody else? Uh, defensive lineman just got brought in as a part owner too somewhere. Was it really? also with the Raiders? Um, yeah, he just got approval. Got it, and it was. Uh, I mean, it it's JJ? within the last. JJ Watt? No, no. I was trying to think. Um, I want to think a defensive lineman who made enough money to 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 get to get themselves in there. Interesting. Maybe I have it wrong. Uh, but I do also want to, while Raider Jim checks that out, um, I do want to clean something up. I did misspeak la or misspoke last week talking about Aston Jaunty. Um, he is draft eligible. Um, I was listening to it after the fact and, and realized that, um, yeah, I, I was looking at his stats uh, and I saw him as a sophomore, but I was looking at his 2023 stats. So he is draft eligible. He's a junior. He can He still does have eligibility, but I wanted to clean that up. Um, but in terms of the Tom Brady stuff, I think now that that quote, not ideal, especially for Tom Telesco. Um, but I think this is going to bring at the very least credibility to that front office. Um, I don't think Mark Davis is looked about at a very high regard in the agent community, the free agent community, the, the other owners, you know, just kind of looking out goes. So I think there's definitely some credibility there, um, but I do think there is a situation we're going to hear something about Tom Brady was somewhere or he asked somebody something he wasn't supposed to. I, I'm, you know, I yep. kind of said that tongue in cheek a little bit and, you know, have a little laugh, but we're going to get to a point. And when it comes to ownership blunders, the NFL, how they punish you, unfortunately, I mean, they do do it monetarily, but that doesn't affect them too much. But unfortunately, it's draft picks. And again, if, if that ball's under tampering, that that's the only negative I really think this could become. Because even if he comes in and like, you know, you know, Roman Senate's not, you know, uh, literally, but, you know, pulls a coup on Mark Davis, I think that would be a positive for the Raider organization. But um, so again, like I'm, I'm not, you right. know, not condoning anything, but that wouldn't be the end of the world for the Raider organization. But that would, I think, be the only negative was some of this other stuff of him trying to be a, you know, color commentator, also wanting to be a part time, you know, owner. That might be an issue. But um, did you find anything on that, uh, Raider Jim? I, you know, maybe I dreamt all that. So hey, I'll look it up it, and next week I'll bring it to you. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, well, I tell you what, if in the next 48 hours um something like that breaks, I'm 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 texting you for the lottery numbers or any any numbers you might have dreamt in the last 48 hours, but uh perfect. With that being said, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the NFL Weekly presented by the First Off the Bench Podcast Network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are First, it is time for you all to go wash your hands and stop hating everybody. Talk to you all very soon. Take care.